There's a lot more that could be said about that, but you know, there's something that is even more on my mind this morning, and it is the first reading, where we have our scriptures uh, teaching us about God in the beginning as the creator. And I want to preface what I'm about to say by saying I'm not preaching hatred of anyone because this is about marriage. I'm not preaching hatred. I'm preaching the Catholic faith from the revealed word of God that we hold to as Catholics. We might not like what the word of God says, but Jesus said this, the earth and the world will pass away, but my word will not pass away. So what we heard this morning is going to outlast this entire world in which you and I live. It's never going to pass away, this word. And what do we find when we go to the scriptures, the holy scriptures, the revelation of our faith, our Catholic faith, given to us this morning? Well, it says, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. And of course, he went on then to make the animals, the creatures, and he'd bring them, and Adam named them all. But to none of them did Adam find a suitable partner. So at that point, as, again, I'm reading from our sacred scriptures. This is the Bible. This is our faith. Our our Catholic faith is based on this scriptures. The Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs, and he closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. A suitable partner. And... What did God create as a suitable partner? It wasn't Steve. It was Eve. This is the truth of our faith. It wasn't Steve. If God had created a suitable partner for Adam named Steve, he couldn't have said to them, now be fruitful and multiply because Adam and Steve are sterile. They can't have children. And so, had he created a suitable partner for Adam named Steve, Adam and Steve would have grown old, died, and that would have been the end of the human race as we know it. And that's the truth. A man and a man cannot have children. Now today they might say, well, we have in vitro fertilization today. Now beside the fact, it's a whole other homily, the church defines, does not accept in vitro fertilization, but you still cannot have a child conceived in a Petri dish And it's never just one, that's the problem. You implant one of the children in the Petri dish, but then what do you do with the 16 or 20 that are left over? Uh, What do you do with those kids? Usually they freeze them. Not a good thing. But nonetheless, we have this. The only way you could fertilize a child and conceive it within a Petri dish is because a woman contributes the other necessary part of life. We can't create that. It was given us by God when he created Eve, not Steve. So, this this whole thing that, you know, well, science today says it's natural. No, it's not natural. Because God is the author of both creation 
and revelation. God is the author of both nature and grace. So you can't have reasonable science contradicting God's revelation because he's author of both. Science studies nature. And if it discovers, it thinks it discovers something there that contradicts revelation, it's incorrect because they, they both have the same author. God. And here we have God creating the natural, compatible partner for Adam. And it's not Steve, it's Eve. And that's the truth of our faith. Now, the proof that there's no good science against what I'm saying to you right now in faith is that there's no good reason that the other side has to present to me and engage me in debate. They don't have a good reason for why a man should marry a man or a woman marry a woman. There is no good reason. Otherwise, they could present it to me and we could debate reasonably and even come to some kind of disagreement, possibly. But that's not what they're doing, are they? What they're doing now is canceling me, censoring me, trying to silence me, and all they have is not reason now, because there is no reason. They just have the will. And the will, all it does is impose and force and silence and get angry and hateful. That's all it does. And that's all they can do with me, and it's all they did with Jesus on Good Friday. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the light. And on Good Friday, during the trial, in John's Gospel, in order to silence the truth and snuff out the light, the Jewish leaders went so far at one point as to say, we have no king but Caesar, the ultimate in betrayal. That's how far the will to impose will go in silencing truth and snuffing out the light. But I want you to also notice how far truth and light will go. It's uncompromising. Jesus went to his death. And then the Father raised him from the dead, putting him beyond all our little manipulations and impositions. He can't be killed anymore. And his word shall never pass away. It's going to be there after this entire world disappears. And it will judge us. And I'm here to tell you, he is as uncompromising about the truth as he was on Good Friday. When he went to his death. So what does that mean for us? We... we as Catholics, we need to stay the course of our faith. We need to stay the course of our sanity. Because that world out there is starting to go insane. And any sane voice, it's starting to cancel it. Censor it. And get angry at it. Impose upon it because there is no more rational foundation for conversation. Just willful imposition with the power of the state. I am not a child of the state. The state did not create me. The state does not give me my rights. The God who is the creator created me, gave me life, designed me to be what I am, not the state. So therefore, the state does not have the right to take my life because it didn't give me my life. 
And I can tell you this much, any state that would proceed with aggression and imposition upon God's people will not stand very long because God won't let it stand for the sake of his people. He is not indifferent to us in our plight. We need to stay the course of our faith. It's our sanity. And it is truth. And truth is uncompromising, even more determined to outlast the world when it comes to trying to snuff out the truth. The truth is even more determined and doesn't give in. Jesus Christ didn't cave for a moment before Pilate. And he went the way that his father called him. So let me read to you one more time this word of ours. It is not good for the man to be alone. I will, this is God speaking now, I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man. And while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. That was his suitable partner, a woman. This is our faith. This is our, the word of God that shall never pass away ever again. It is the truth, and God isn't going to adjust it. So let's take confidence in this, even if they do come to cancel us and censor us and try to silence us and get angry at us. I'm not angry at them. I don't hate them. But I would like to call all of them to repentance because there is mercy awaiting them. God is stern with the arrogant, but to the humble, he shows kindness. So humble yourself before him and you'll know kindness, mercy, forgiveness, love, and he'll start to try to build you up again. But if we keep going down this path, we're going to be hurting ourselves and hurting each other. And he won't let that go on too long. Because he doesn't want us to hurt ourselves and destroy ourselves and end up totally wounding ourselves all over the place. So let's stay with Jesus. That's the message of this morning. And let's stay with the Blessed Mother. She's by our side as well as our advocate, our intercessor. She wants us to be with her son. So we're with her, we're with him. And let's bring our prayer before this altar for this world of ours, that it will return to sanity because God really does have a better idea in his son, Jesus Christ.